Our top story, the historic hearing to legalize same-sex marriages has gotten underway today. If the five-judge constitutional bench does agree to it, then India will become the 35th country in the world to do so. So it is reasonable to say that this is a big deal. It's a big deal because till 2018, that is till five years ago, being gay could land you in jail. And today, a hearing has begun in the Supreme Court on legalizing same-sex marriages. Today, the Supreme Court said change in society has to be incremental. The question is, has the time for that change come? The arguments in court were compelling on day one. The Supreme Court began by dismissing the center's claim that gay marriages are an elitist urban fact. On the center's contention that marriage can only be between a man and a woman, the court said, this is important, the notion of a man and woman is not absolute, that genitals cannot determine gender. Now, this is one statement that has invoked much commentary online. We'll talk about that in just a bit. In essence, the center made three points in the Supreme Court. One, only parliament can decide on whether same-sex couples can get married because they're saying marriage is an institution. And when you're looking to change an institution or the way an institution has been structured, well, then the Supreme Court cannot do it. The parliament is the one that should be taking that decision. Two, the center also said the court must look at if it can hear the matter in the first place. And third, the center's contention always has been that marriage can only be between a man and a woman, not between a man and a man and a woman and a woman. On the other hand, the LGBTQ community pressed for the same human rights like you and I are entitled to in this country. The Constitution gives us that right and therefore logically the Constitution gives them the same rights. The petitioner said scrapping section 377 simply isn't enough. In response to the center, they also said that an individual's choice is not an elitist concept or a simply or a matter that is simply involving people who live in urban areas. In fact, the crux of the argument that the center is making is, uh, the LGBT community is making is, that Article 377 is gone, but we still find ourselves in a closet, deprived of equality, deprived of dignity, and most importantly, deprived of happiness. Interestingly, India's child rights body, the NCPCR, has jumped into the debate with a view as well. In its application to the Supreme Court, the NCPCR essentially made three distinct points. One, adoption by gay couples is bad for the child. Let's put those graphics out. Two, if parents are gay, the child's development will be hampered. These are the arguments that the child rights body of India is making in the Supreme Court. And three, they are saying that a child adopted by a gay couple would not have the same understanding of traditional and conventional gender roles as a child growing up in a heterogeneous family would. I'm being joined by NCPCR chief Priyank Tanguno. Uh, and I want to ask him to begin with, Priyank, thank you very much for your time. I want to ask you to begin with, what is the NCPCR's locus in this entire case? They have. They have asked legal right for adoption. In fact, they have asked for uh, amendment in the adoption regulation in one of the intervention application mm -hmm. that attracts NCPCR to step in because we are the uh, monitoring authority of Juvenile Justice Act. And as an apex child rights body in the country, we are custodian of rights of children in the country. Mm -hmm. So it's our uh, mandatory duty mm -hmm. to protect the provisions of Juvenile Justice Act, which are in favor of children. As per the provisions there, mm -hmm. uh, Section 57 Juvenile Justice Act and Adoption Regulation also prohibits adoption of a female child mm -hmm. to a male to a single male, but uh, some of the persons who are asking about uh, amendments, 
and declaration of non-constitutional of these provisions. So we have stepped in, we have apprised the Honorable mm -hmm. Supreme Court that this is the situation. There is no mention of such type of adoption in Hack Convention of Adoption, which is a universal law. There is no mention of such type of adoptions in United Nations Convention of Rights of Children. So that is our stack. That's why we are in the Supreme Court. Just because they don't mention it doesn't mean they say it cannot be done, first things first. Then can I ask you what your principal opposition is to same-sex marriages? Because you have put an application in the Supreme Court now. Many people would say that the NCPCR simply doesn't have any locus. It's none of their business right now. We have categorically appealed an Honorable Supreme Court that any repercussion of this uh, petition uh, should not mingle the provisions of Juvenile Justice Act or the Adoption Regulation. Our, our apprehension is that it, it may it may uh, mingle with the juvenile justice provisions of juvenile justice tax and uh, the adoption regulation 2022. Mm -hmm. That's why we are in court. Okay, but you're not you are not elaborating on the application. The NCPCR petition that has been filed is citing many studies that point out that it was not good for the overall development for a child to grow up in the company of same-sex couples. Can I ask you on what basis you are saying this? Because there are enough and more studies done across the world that suggest otherwise. That you know that, that seem to suggest that children who grow up in same-sex marriages are you know are as are turn out as good or as bad as uh, heterogeneous couples? See, uh, in India, we don't have such studies because it is not in practice in India. So, we studied a lot of research abroad. In the countries where it is in practice. Mm. So, we have just, uh, ma, just apprised Honorable Supreme Court about the various studies we, we have noticed during our research work. But there are, as I said, enough and more studies that are, have been done in the UK, that have been done in Australia, most, more recently in Italy as well, that point out otherwise. See, our role is very simple. Whatever we have filed in the court, Mm. is in support of provisions of Juvenile Justice Act which are already in consonance with UNCRC and the Hague Convention of Adoption. So we are just citing those studies. Mm. Okay, Priyank, we leave it there for the moment. Thank you very much. Let me get a counter to that. Let me go across to filmmaker Onir, uh, who is openly gay and has for the last many, many years advocated for same-sex marriages. Onir, thank you very much for your time here on Mirror Now. As a member of the LGBT community, before I take a response to what the NCPCR is saying about gay parents and their children turning out rotten, I want to ask you what today feels like. Uh, you know, today has been variously described as historic. Is it historic or a little more personal than that for you? I think it could become historic. Right now, it's still apprehension, anxiety, mm. hope. It's a mix of all that. And, you know, I remember I'm actually thinking about the 2000 High Court verdict. You know, we all were in a very jubilant mood that at time it will be decriminalized. Whereas at that time, the Supreme Court had, you know, gone uh, reverse the Delhi High Court verdict. So uh, I think from then onwards, one is always a little cautious to start celebrating before. So it could be a historic day. I hope it is a historic day. Already very late in the day, but it's our right. And I, I'm hopeful, very hopeful that Justice Chandra Chur, you know, he's always a sign of hope, uh, does uh, justice to us, to all uh, my co- <coughs> community members because uh, we deserve to be treated as equals in this democratic country of ours.
Ori, let me now draw your attention to some of the objections that have been made in the Supreme Court. The latest to jump into the phrase, the NCPCR. We'll talk about the government later. Now, the NCPCR is the national child rights body. And they are saying that same-sex marriages are not a good idea because they are bad for children. Because gay couples make bad parents. How do you react to that? One is, you know, <clears throat> I feel very often this comes from a desperate need to control and deprive others of their rights. It comes from a very patriarchal position, uh, which does not take into account that today a huge number in India, actually a huge number of children are abused. And most of them are children who live in heterosexual you know, uh, uh, families, you know, families which are following that, uh, you know, family structure. And there is no research anywhere in the world which says that same-sex, uh, you know, in countries where same-sex couples have adopted children, which says that same-sex couples make bad parents. There are good parents and bad parents which could happen with same-sex couples. We are just as human as anyone else, and there are uh, same-sex couples who will have flaws, who will have, you know, uh, who will not be the ideal parents, just like which happens in heteronormative, you know, heterosexual couples, uh, good parents and bad parents. And when it comes to adoption, what we need is a good system of counselling, you know, counselling parents, counselling children, and also monitoring that the child is happy and the parents, you know, so which should be uniform for everybody you know all uh, all all cases of adoption but that does not give anyone the right to deprive us of beat marriage or adoption rights okay but the ncpcr is saying and this is what they are saying in their application that when children are brought up in same sex marriages it skews their view on gender roles and gender identities This is so unfortunate that, you know, this comes from a space which look down, which looks down on people from the LGBT community. So it looks down upon a child who choose, who is from the community, who is born into the community and comes from that insecurity. For example, I have been born in a family where my parents are heterosexuals. That didn't change my perception. So if a child is raised by a homosexual a couple had he, she, or they come from whatever gender identification and sexuality identification they come from, why would they suddenly change it? You know, I couldn't change it. Thousands of people who are <coughs> queer have not changed their identity. They all come, they've been brought up in hetero, uh, you know, sexual, heteronormative, a uh, heteronormative society. Very often, forget about, you know, parents. When I grew up, I didn't even know about my existence because I was absent in my literature, in my cinema, in my books, in science. We didn't exist. But that didn't change my orientation. That didn't change me from being who I am. So this assumption comes only from homophobia. It begins and ends there. It's fake, it's false, and it comes from a kind of hate narrative. Oni, then you, do you think the government is being homophobic as well, uh, given the sort of affidavit that they have filed in court, saying that gay marriages are an urban elitist concept, that this has nothing to do with the hinterland, this has nothing to do with urban India? Essentially, a fashion. Hai. You know, it is not only homophobic, it is also coming from a position of absolute, you know, uh, mm -hmm. lack of knowledge. Uh, trying to also whitewash things. And I feel that we come from a, we are increasingly going into the space of, you know, trying to reframe truth in a way that it, it looks like true. You know, it's not, you keep on hearing, oh, it's an urban thing, where you forget that, you know, sexuality is not based on caste, religion, class, race, color, it does not matter where you are. And it it discounts the happiness and, uh, you know, kind of 
demeans the happiness and aspirations of millions of Indians who live in rural India, who are queer, who want to be treated with love, respect and dignity. And I think that it's very, very unfortunate that the state government, uh, that the center uh, has taken the stand of calling it an urban elitist, you know, almost like as if it's a fashion. No, my identity is not a fashion. Our identity is not a fashion. Our identity is what we were born with and what we are proud of. And no one has the right to demean us like this. The government is also saying that marriage is an institution. And when you're talking about changing it, the Supreme Court doesn't have the power to do it. It's the parliament. What do you say to this? Does that argument have merit? Because many people will say, logically, the government is right. I first of all think that institutions are not meant to be static. There was a time when the institution of, you know, marriage, Hindu marriage also oh, uh, looked at widows in a certain way. How, how, how the role of widows segregated to society. Sati was a part of institution of marriage at some point. Dowry is still a part of, you know, the marriage institution, child marriage, you know, and the joke is if we leave these things to the assembly, first of all, it's driven by a populist agenda, which is not necessarily what human rights stand for. And one of the examples you can see is recently when there was a discussion on child rights child marriage, right? The legislature in, I think, in the assembly in Rajasthan wanted child marriage to continue, you know, overwhelmingly voted for it. So how how is that okay, where the Supreme Court has specifically said that child marriage is not okay? Similarly, I feel that for years and years and years before the Supreme Court came in in 2018, we have You've been fighting for our rights in the assembly, and it's always been overruled by homophobic people. You know, we hardly have representation. So who will talk for us? You know, there are hardly also any women. Women are generally more allies, you know. They're hardly there in the parliament. And I feel that when the assembly fails, the Supreme Court, which is the highest authority for human rights, you know, which is not led by populist measures needs to come in and they are the ones who you know one looks as a okay. common citizen of this country who wants equal rights the only agency that we can look up to is the supreme court and the supreme court should always have that independent right to fight for the citizens of this country when the government fails because of populist measures Thank you very much, Oni. The Supreme Court has opened up a debate, a debate that will polarize this country, but a debate that is just so necessary for the sake of uh, equality, fraternity, uh, and the happiness of many, many of our citizens. Thank you very much. Let me introduce my guest to you this evening. As I said, this is a debate, uh, you, you know, which, which has deeply polarized families as well. That there are people who have different points of view. Let's get all of those in. It's important. The Supreme Court is in the process of hearing all the views coming in. Uh, I think it'll be good for us to hear all views coming in as well. Aditi Anand is a petitioner in the case. Thank you very much for joining us. Neil Pate is a senior journalist with us. Dr. Chinu Agarwal is a psychologist. Thank you, sir, very much. Acharya Lokesh Muni was with us yesterday, joining us today as well, representing the saint community, as it were. He's also a social reformer. And Pramila Nesargi is a lawyer and an activist. Pramila ji, I'm coming to you first. The basic argument that is being made in court today is this. The LGBTQ plus community is as much a citizen as you are and I am. Then why deny them the right to marriage, a right that all of us have? It's simply unconstitutional. We are not objecting. We have not said that we are taking away dignity. Mm. We have not prevented them from loving. Who said that we are prevented? They are a class by themselves. Man or man is deemed to be one class, women another class. And the third gender is another class. Three classes of mm. society we have. 
Each one of them, mm. they have their own right. Women's right, men's right, and this also, the LGBT's right. We said, question is, don't you have a union of yourself. You want to have a living relationship, not, no one is preventing you in living in relationship. But don't call it a marriage. Marriage is a sacrament. It can't be called a marriage. Marriage can be only between a man and a woman and not by others. Now we are talking of the children's mm. right. Look at the image. I'll just give an example. You see, the children in the school, the children will have the parents' day. Children will be asked to get their parents. The parents mm. come. The child who is supposed to be the only the gay go, what will be the uh, mind of the child? All others will be man and woman. And this one child will bring only two gays or two men. They won't know how to distinguish with them. The, don't you think there is something wrong in it? Apart from that, there's a, psycho, a psychiatrist and a psychologist in our panel. I'm sure that he will agree with me. A child in mm. life would like to see the father's figure and the mother's figure every day. It, if we does not see the father's figure and the mother's figure, the children will become vagabonds. They don't be the normal children. All around development will not be there. The mental health of the child is equally important in a society and we can't neglect them. That's the reason I am telling you, you want to have a life, have it. Nobody is preventing. Okay. Call it a union of two gays, two uh, uh, men together. Don't call it a marriage and don't insult the child in a society. That's what I have been telling you. Let let the Supreme Court take note of. And the children okay. are constitute 50% of the population of this country. You can't neglect them and their rights. Their mental health okay. and the physical health is equally important when you're taking a decision in a society. That's what has to be okay. looked into when you think of a marriage. Okay. A child can always say, Pramila Ji, Daddy, hai. Mommy. Okay. That's how it works. Yes. Okay. Pramila Ji, I understand the point you're making. The only thing is that the Supreme Court has said today, and these are of course only observations, that the concept of man and woman cannot be absolute. That only genitals cannot define gender. The Supreme Court is taking this progressive view. Why can't the country? See, the Supreme Court's observation cannot be taken as a judgment. If the Supreme Court judges, all observations made by the Supreme Court has to be taken as a gospel truth. What happened in that, uh, the, the, that lady's case, Nupur Sharma? Do you want to say that the observation made by the Supreme Court must be ta taken as a gospel truth? All women in the country have criticized it. That's the reason. Mm -hmm. Just because some observations are made while dealing with the case, that cannot be taken as an absolute mm -hmm. truth. It is yet to be uh, argued, yet to be analyzed, and ultimately they have to come to conclusion whether what they are saying is right or wrong. For question, questioning the other side, okay. getting okay. Uh, opinions from them, always Supreme Court always gives the opinion. They don't take it as a ground to because gender, man or woman, but what about okay. the neutral gender? Say, okay. There's a neutral gender also. Hmm. Can you do, okay. you say, a man can marry a neutral gender? Okay. A woman can marry a neutral gender? That's what has to be looked into. Well, well, I think that's the argument in court that anyone can marry anyone. Before I get to Aditi and Neil and get the other side of the argument, I quickly want to go across to the psychologist on the group. Dr. Chinu Agarwal, Pramila ji is asking simply, she said, ask the psychologist who's on the group, yeah. uh, on the panel, if same-sex, if children who are growing up in same-sex families uh, are not impacted psycho uh, psychologically, that, that, it, that it'll give them mental stress, uh, they'll not turn out okay, etc., etc. The NCPCR is pretty much making the same argument in court. Tell us the truth. Uh, do children Shira. want happy families? Or do they want only hetero... Or can they only be happy in hetero... Uh, you know, fa families where they have a father and a mother in a traditional role? Because I can tell you, many, many children in this country are growing up in very unhappy heterogeneous relationships. Exactly. And Shreya, this question is not of a simple truth. It is a question of looking into the dynamics of parenting as a whole. So when we are talking about heterosexual parenting as well, there is a concept in psychology which we call as alloparenting, where we say that it takes a village to raise a child. It's not only the parents who play a primary role in raising children, healthy and happy children. 
It is also the role of grandparents. It is also the role of elder siblings. It is also the role of other people, aunts and uncles. It is the role of neighbors. It is the role of society, the community that in which they are thriving. So, as you said in your prelude to the program, that there are so many studies which are also saying that there is no difference in the mental and emotional health of children raised in heterosexual or same-sex marriages. But there are a few studies which are saying that same-sex marriage, children in same-sex marriage have been found to be more distressed than stressed. <laughs> But is the causal variable over here the same-sex marriage? Or is it the stressed relationship between the same-sex couple and the stress and uncooperative attitude of the community, the family, and the society as a whole, which is causing this stress mm -hmm. in the children? Okay. That we will have to see. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Aditi Anand, then let me get you in here. You are a petitioner. And uh, the argument that is being made by Pramila Ji is an argument that is being made by many others. Look, uh, there are enough and more reports that are telling us that since 2014 to now, there has been a massive jump in the acceptance in the number of people who are accepting gay relationships. The question that Pramila Ji is asking you is this. You know, gay sex has been legitimized. You no longer will go to jail for what you do in the bedroom. Now, why are you asking for marriage? Why are you asking for children? Uh, <clears throat> so, Shreya, thank you for having me on this panel. Um, I'm a firm believer that queer people should always be able to tell their own stories. So I'm grateful for you to give both Neil and Onir and I a platform to be able to do that. I want to respond very specifically to something that Pramila Ji said, which is that no one is taking away your dignity or uh, not taking away your dignity, but stay in your lane. Uh, the country that we've grown up in and the country that many of us have chosen to live in is a country where all our culture, uh, our rituals are built on three pillars, birth, death, and marriage. Uh, you're basically saying that you're denying us uh, our rights in birth, in death, and in marriage, uh, but you're still upholding our dignity. Uh, you're, you're talking about petitioners in a country where uh, when you're growing up, one of your parents' sort of dreams is that you are married. Uh, not only uh, are you denying petitioners and other queer people the right uh, to that marriage, you're also denying that dignity to parents of queer people. Uh, we are saying that uh, we understand the kind of culture that we live in, we understand the kind of society that we live in, and therefore we understand that marriage is very much a basis uh, on which that society is built. And what we are being told by people who are opposing this is that as long as we don't see you, as long as you don't come into our spaces, as long as you sort of stay in your corner, in your lane, uh, we're fine. We won't call you criminals. But I don't think that actually enshrines the spirit of giving your co-citizen uh, uh, dignity and the same rights that you hold and enjoy. Um, if it's okay with you, I'd also like to respond to one more point that was made um, which is with regards to, um, um, you know, what happens to children of same-sex parents and uh, what would happen, for example, uh, should they go to school um, and, you know, go for parent-teacher meetings, etc. Um, I have to tell you from personal experience that society has moved way beyond that concern. Uh, schools are not just recognizing same-sex parents. They are very much part of the curriculum uh, schools are opening themselves up to, uh, you know, new reading material of ensuring that other children are sensitized, that the staff is sensitized. Uh, and I think the, the real question to ask here is that adoption, the Juvenile Justice Act, it is the welfare of the child that is at, at the heart of that act. 
and the argument that is often made is mm. the argument that a child needs to have a father figure and a mother figure in their lives and without that they would there would be some form of deviance but the question here is and because we're specifically talking about adoption is what about orphans uh, there are children in this country who don't have either a mother or a father and you're literally denying those children a happy home where they are going to be given the equality of opportunity the equality of education uh, sorry the, the the opportunity to education the opportunity for love from their parents protection you're denying children the right their own rights by making this very sort of facetious argument that there needs to be one father figure and one mother figure in every child's life there is absolutely no data that upholds that idea after all is it that a child is perfectly in sync uh, until they are let's say a teenager and then they okay. tragically lose one parent and then they suddenly become deviant there is absolutely no merit in this argument mm. uh, and i think that this mm. is this is this is a case okay. that um you know the law the law is actually i feel that the of course the law tends to pull society into the future but i also think in this case society is ready mm. because that is the lived reality of me okay. onir um perhaps, mm. neil i don't know you at all but perhaps neil and i know that the argument is going to be made against that is we are this urban elite crowd mm. but the truth is that the government mm. the so nobody denies that there are gay people everywhere so nobody is denying that there are young gay queer children uh, in you know the demo demographies that people keep keep quoting today we talked about farmers in south india for example mm. uh, so essentially what we are saying to the supreme court is that when you know that there is a queer child you are also recognizing that that queer child mm. is going to be in circumstances that are going to be extremely difficult for them and yet you are still denying that child his rights mm. uh by by assuming that mm. that his concerns are somehow different mm. just because he comes from a less privileged background i feel that is literally the opposite of social justice okay. and that is that is the opposite of what the supreme court stands mm. for and what we stand for as a country mm. Mm. acharya lokesh muni i want to i want you to come in here aaj uh, मुकुल रोहत की जो हैं जो पेटिशनर्स की तरफ से बात कर रहे हैं वो कह रहे हैं चलिए छोड़िए अगर आपको लगता है दिस इज अबाउट रिलीजन और जो पर्सनल लॉज हैं हिंदू पर्सनल लॉ मुस्लिम पर्सनल लॉ अगर वो इम्पैक्ट होगा वो पूरा हिल जाएगा तो छोड़िए उनको छोड़िए लेट गे पीपल गेट मैरिड दी एल एल जी बी टी क्यू प्लस कम्युनिटी गेट मैरिड अंडर द स्पेशल मैरिज एक्ट तब तो आप लोगों को कोई तकलीफ नहीं है कल आप मुझे बोल रहे थे कि पूरे संत समाज को जितने रिलीजियस uh, ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैं उन सबको बहुत आपत्ति है इस बात से कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट ये सुनवाई कर रही है अगर आज मुकुल रोहत की बोल रहे हैं छोड़िए पर्सनल लॉज अब हिंदू पर्सनल लॉ या मुस्लिम पर्सनल लॉ बोर्ड को नहीं पर्सनल uh, लॉ uh, को नहीं छेड़ते स्पेशल मैरिजेस एक्ट के अंडर अगर हम ये यूनियन लीगलाइज कर दें तब तो आप लोगों को किसी तरह की परेशानी नहीं होनी चाहिए नहीं देखिए मैं सबसे पहले तो ये कहना चाहूंगा कि ऑनरेबल uh, सुप्रीम कोर्ट का हम सभी आदर करते हैं और हमारे लोकतांत्रिक प्रणाली के अंदर न्यायपालिका एक बहुत बड़ा स्तंभ है लेकिन मैं साथ ही साथ ये निवेदन करना चाहता हूं कि ये मामला केवल इतना सा नहीं है कि दो लोगों की खुशी के लिए मूल भारत की सभ्यता भारत की संस्कृति या का सामाजिक ताना बाना या की हमारी वैवाहिक पारिवारिक सुदृढ़ संस्था का स्वरूप और खासकर जैसा अभी और विद्वानों ने भी कहा कि जो बच्चे अडॉप्ट करेंगे और वो उस तरह से कुछ लोगों की खुशी के लिए बहुत बड़े तबके को मानसिक त्रासदी की ओर धकेलना उनको दाव पे लगाना मैं आदरणीय सुप्रीम कोर्ट से निवेदन करना चाहूंगा सर्वधर्म की ओर से कि हमारे लोकतंत्र में सबको अपने ढंग से जीने का अधिकार है संविधान अधिकार देता है और हमें उसमें कोई आपत्ति नहीं है 
लेकिन उसको वैवाहिक जो है दर्जा प्रदान करना ये सामाजिक ताने बाने को छिन्न भिन्न करेगा हमारी सभ्यता संस्कृति के साथ ये खिलवाड़ होगी छेड़छाड़ होगी और ऐसे के अंदर जो एडोप्ट किए जाने वाले बच्चे जिस त्रासदी से गुजरेंगे उनके उनको जो है बहुत बड़ा तनाव और अनेक प्रकार की साइकोसोमेटिक डिजीज मुनि जी और... मुनि जी सुन लीजिए जी नहीं डिजीज नहीं है सबसे पहले तो डिजीज नहीं है होमोसेक्सुअल होना ये 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 हम सबको पता होना चाहिए कि ये डिजीज नहीं है नहीं मैंने और डिजीज, बार बार मैंने, ये मैंने बात होमो, जता रहे हैं नहीं 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 मैंने होमोसेक्सुअल को डिजीज नहीं कहा है मैं स्पष्ट करूं मैंने होमोसेक्सुअल को डिजीज नहीं कहा है कदापि नहीं कहा है मैं तो ये कह रहा हूँ की सभी को अपने ढंग से जीने का अधिकार है लेकिन उसको वैवाहिक दर्जा देकर के उस संबंधों को सामाजिक रूप देना जो है ये हमारी सभ्यता हमारी संस्कृति हमारे यहाँ के रीति रिवाज हमारे यहाँ का कल्चर हमारी पारिवारिक संस्था उस सब के साथ जो है बहुत बड़े अनेक अनेक प्रश्न खड़े होंगे और उन एडॉप्ट करने वाले बच्चों को जिस त्रासदी से गुजरना होगा उनको जिन प्रश्नों को झेलना होगा उन सब पर सर्वांगीण चिंतन करना चाहिए सुप्रीम कोर्ट को केवल कुछ लोगों की इच्छा मैंने ये पहले ही स्पष्ट कर दिया कि संविधान सबको अपने ढंग से जीने का दर्जा देता है तो... उसमें कोई आपत्ति नहीं है ठीक है लेकिन और दूसरे में भारत देखिए तो हर देश की हर देश की नहीं सुनिए आप आपने सबको लंबा लंबा समय दिया है ना हर देश की अपनी सभ्यता है हर देश की अपनी संस्कृति है बोलिए हर देश का अपना कल्चर है भारत का अपना कल्चर है भारत को भारत के परिप्रेक्ष्य में देखिए और भारत केवल शहरों में ही नहीं बसता है भारत की बहुत बड़ी आबादी गांवों में बसती है आपको सर्वांगीण चिंतन किए बिना केवल प्रगतिशीलता प्रगति अरे ये प्रगतिशीलता नहीं है ये विकृति है और मैं फिर सर्वधर्म हाँ। की ओर से अपील करना चाहता हूं आदरणीय सुप्रीम कोर्ट को बड़े आदर के साथ सर्वांगीण इस पर चिंतन किया जाए और उसे वैवाहिक दर्जा न दिया जाए हाँ। ये मैं बलपूर्वक सर्वधर्म की ओर से अपील कर रहा हूं अभी चिंतन बहुत दिन होगा हफ्तों होगा महीनों होगा बट नील आई एम फेयरली सर्टन दैट This is a line of argument that you have heard all your life. Bharatiya Sanskriti, Bharatiya Samaj. What will happen to children who are adopted? They will have uncomfortable questions to answer, etc., etc. When this line of argument comes to you, and not just from Muni ji, I'm fairly certain that it has come to you from from family as well, from friends as well, from co-workers as well. How is it that you respond? Uh, you know, that's a very interesting question, and. my family has been very accepting i mean my parents live with us that is me and my partner dr roop is a neurologist we've been together for more than 20 years and you can imagine the pressure as a doctor and as a journalist what we must have been through but uh, when i see these kind of ludicrous arguments you know i mean somebody calls lgbt and the children that they will be raised as vagabonds somebody is labeling us as you know urban elite views somebody saying ki you know it's just appalling i mean it just feels sad as to what level are we stooping at this debate it's a very simple question and that is giving someone their fundamental rights that's all it's as simple as that i mean someone the uh, uh, earlier in this debate mentioned about what the children will go through and what will they introduce their parents in school and what will be the psychiatric and psychological effect on the child i mean i'd like to point few basic things to them and the first and foremost thing is just two or three weeks ago if i'm not mistaken the indian psychiatric society actually came out with a statement asserting that lgbt qi plus persons should enjoy equal civil rights including and i repeat including the right to marriage and adoption like any other heterosexual person in the same statement and this is from the indian psychiatric society it's not from you know some village bumpkin or somebody you know who's a crook for god's sake in the same statement they've also mentioned 
children, irrespective of heterosexual or homosexual couples, I mean, they haven't mentioned homosexual, but same-sex couples should be raised in a gender-neutral and unbiased manner. I mean, this is the most important thing, actually, you know, you can ever impart to a child to be sensitive, to respect gender and be unbiased. I mean, each and every parent, whether it is straight parents or gay parents, they want the best for their child. And you have to lead with example. I mean, it's as simple as that. And, you know, what can one say when I hear arguments like this, you know? Luckily for me, as you said, at work, at home, I've been out and open at work. I mean, and my bosses in the Times of India and wherever I work, they've all been very accepting. And this was way before Section 377 was even read down. So, I mean, you know, when I hear this kind of argument, you know, it's a very elitist, urban kind of view and a fashion, which is completely ludicrous and stupid in some ways, I feel, you know. I mean, people from rural area in India, I mean, I'd like to quote some of them over here if you want. I mean, the best sprinter in our country, Duti Chand, from a tiny village, Gopalpur in Odisha. I mean, she's one of them. I mean, it's not an urban kind of a fashion or fad. You have Grace Banu, you know, then you have Muskan from Sangli, who were doing a fantastic job and took care of so many LGBTQI people during the pandemic. So what are we talking about here? Yeah? I mean, it's as simple as that. And if we call ourselves as a progressive nation, then I think the most important thing of a progressive nation is to ensure that each and every person, including those from sexual minority and other minorities, you are sensitive to their issues. That's what humanity is, I feel. Okay, we leave it there. It was important for us to hear all of you. And I'm glad we've managed to do that. Uh, Aditi, thank you very much. Neil, thank you very much. The hearing, as I said, will continue for weeks and months. So we do hope that you can keep coming back to Mirror now just to take us through what the Supreme Court is saying, what the op opposite side is saying, and what your views are. Dr. Chinu Agarwal, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Pramila ji. And thank you, Muniji, for joining us as well. Thank you very much. Let's move on. And uh, we are moving on to the other big story.